there. Here I have Mr. Luke with me and we're gonna do a short interview. So Mr. Luke, thank you for accepting it's again. It's a pleasure. So, can you remember the first time you came to Turkey? Uh, yeah, well, more or less. It must be about 25 years ago. That's a quarter years. of a century ago. <laughs> I think it was an Ayatefel conference. Right. And I was invited to come and give a talk, and I gave a talk in Turkey for the first time in Istanbul called How to Be a Boring Teacher. How to Be a Boring Teacher. Out in Istanbul. Yeah. That was my topic okay. 25 or 30 years ago. I don't like to think just how long it was, but it was long enough, yeah. 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 So that's what I did. I came for a conference. All right, so since then, what changes have you seen, I mean, in language teaching? Well, Nihal, to notice that, you really have to come frequently. And I do come quite, I feel, about ten times in the last two years, in fact. And I do go to schools, mostly the private sector, uh, to see teachers teaching uh, for a number of reasons. As a trainer, as a writer, it's very helpful and important. And I can't say I've seen changes because I kind of tried that systematic observation. But what I have seen is a wide variety of different kinds of teachers. Most of them very good because Turkish teachers are enthusiastic on the whole. They love kids. They're very sentimental, if you like, emotional. Yes, we are. So they're passionate. But, you know, and you get the other types who have low expectations of their learners. They may think their learners are a bit stupid. Um, you know, slow learners, bad learners, you know, the kind of thing that we were talking about. So you get that kind of teacher as well. Often see them wearing a white overall, looking like doctors, being very serious. And the first thing they told me once, I remember in a school, is, oh, the class you're going to see, oh, they're very bad students. I said, really? Oh, they don't want to learn, not interested, and they mess around. I went in there and they asked me to teach them. And I taught the Turkish kids, and they were fantastic. Mind you, I was a guest, special circumstances, but they were so enthusiastic, and so they were looking at me and saying, more, more, let's have some more, don't go at the end. They said, don't leave us. Oh. And you, so my conclusion is, I say that, Michal, to say that some teachers underestimate their learners. Those, for me, are the bad teachers that you find everywhere. The kids are okay, basically. It's what you do with them. They're often a challenge for us, a problem. And I've seen good teachers in Turkey who motivate their learners because they believe in their learners. And that is half the battle. It's not easy to control a class. But I think Turkish learners are actually quite well-behaved, respectful towards the figure of the teacher. Am I right? Is yes, they are. There is yeah. a lot of respect. It's not like in the West. You know, I know what you mean, yes. Chaos, you know, it is. discipline problems, even violence. So there's more respect here, which makes it easier. And I've noticed that over the years. And recently I was here a couple of months ago, went into the schools. It was the same kind of very well-behaved children, keen to learn, and teachers who do their best to respond. All right. So if we get a little more personal, can you tell me how did you start writing ELT materials? Well, it was a kind of accident. I was working with, with the British Council <laughs> in the early 80s and a colleague of mine, who was also an actor as I was in an amateur theatre group, we were teaching an advanced level class and we noticed that there was a gap between the B2 level, we call it now, and the C2 level. In the middle, there was a kind of advanced level. There were no good books, can you imagine, in those days. There were mostly testing materials, practice tests. And we wanted a teaching book, a learning book. And because there was this gap, we offered the idea to a publisher, OUP, Oxford University Press. And they published our first book. My first book was called On the Move. It wasn't very good between you and me. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I had my time again. But, you know, it was a first. It was a beginning. And... Your first efforts aren't always your best. But it was an experience. It was in black and white. Can you imagine? Black and Just white. Just black, no colour. That's <laughs> inconceivable nowadays, isn't it? It is, black and white. That was more or less the first one I did. I may have done just before that a book, Medical English, Medical English for Doctors. So I was teaching the doctors, a group of doctors, and I'd created my own lessons. There were no published materials. And with the lessons that I prepared, I put them together and made a little book, and it was published as Reading for Medicine or something. So that was about 1982. 
Okay. So tell me, please, where do you keep getting on um, you, the inspiration? Inspiration for, for well, writing. Well, for writing. Yes. Well, mostly I would say Nihal from the classroom. Um, I mean, I've, I've been teaching for over 40 years in the classroom. I've stopped for the last couple of years because I've just got too many things to do. Just too, too busy doing different things. But the inspiration is basically, I, th I would say two things. One is from the experience of teaching kids in class. And you draw your ideas of what gets their attention, what help they need to read a text, to listen to a text, what kind of topics may be motivating for them. The other thing I would say is I suppose I read a lot myself and reading a lot, although it's a different kind of reading, a textbook is not a proper book, it's not a real book if you see what I mean. Um, you try to bring some of the things you've enjoyed in a good book into the text that you use and the structure of a unit. So the structure of the unit is coherent and it's kind of connected. I like things which are connected and which flow. Right. And as the lesson develops, as in a lecture, or a book or a lesson, you see the different parts unfolding and hopefully fitting together nicely. That's my ideal. It doesn't always work, but you try. Right. So you gave a talk today which was very amazing. Very amazing. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so um, how do you get ready for a talk? How do you feel before it's all? Oh, well, I feel nervous like a, a lot of people. In spite of all the many, many years, Nihal, that I've been doing this, my first public talk at IATF was in 1980, and I still feel nervous. But the secret, if there is a secret for me, is in the preparation. That every image you show, every point you make, you, you, you've thought of it in advance, even if you don't say it even if you don't show everything that you've prepared. I think it's important to know the terrain, to know the territory that you're going to cross. That's why as I like to say at the beginning, I'm going to do this, that and the other. It's dangerous because sometimes you don't have time to do it and you look stupid. But I tried again today, I said it's in three parts. First part, second part, third part. And if you get to the third part, if you're lucky, you know, and you come to your conclusion and you've said most of the things, that's the best preparation, a plan. Bob Dylan says something in a song. Know your song well before you start singing. Know your song well before you start singing. So you learn your words, you learn the song, you learn the melody. Um, it's still a bit difficult, especially when you've only done a talk once. This was almost the first time I'd done it and it's a bit unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Next time, unfortunately for you, it'll be much better, I think, for the next audience. Good. Yeah. Good. Preparation then is the answer. Right. So, uh, that's all. That's is that all? Yeah, I'm I finished. Want some more. <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> No, just to say thank you very much. It's no, been thank you. a great visit here to Izmir. Thank it's you. lovely meeting you and I hope your blog is successful. Thank you. I'll visit it and, and make comments. Right. Thank you okay. for today. You've been very friendly and helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>